My friend and I decided to go on a late night drive to find this creepy cemetery one night. We were bored and in a small town with nothing else to do. After about 40 minutes of driving, we got to the state park. Now typically parks are closed after dark, but these roads were still public access, so they weren't off limits to general drivers. However, we were the only car on the road at this point, and it was isolated, we thought. The lanes were surrounded by thick trees, and it was pitch black. No street lights, just darkness. We're on a narrow dirt lane looking for this cemetery, but we drive by it, unknowingly. The area we were driving through was kind of like a square of roads with only one way in and out. We get to the crossroads, where the road we are on goes straight through, or you can continue back through by a left turn only. Next to the ditch across the road from us, we see a dark green sedan pulled into the brush, no lights on, no people around. Not an accident from all we could tell. Whatever, kind of weird. But we slowly turn left and begin the loop back around looking for the small rows of old headstones again. As we get back around to the intersection, about five minutes later, the green sedan is still pulled off in the bushes. But now it's not the only vehicle there. There's a big pickup truck idling in the dark across from us, blocking the straight path. Now it had to have come from the other direction since no other cars passed us or were in front of us or behind us. That was the way we had planned to go, to leave the park since we hadn't found what we were looking for, but we couldn't pass through. This truck was in the middle of the road, taking up all the space on either side. At first we were thinking, this guy's pal probably got his car stuck and called for help. Then this truck guy turns on his headlights, actually his high beams, and begins revving his engine, hard. My friend and I exchange looks, wondering who's overcompensating for something, and when we turn back, trying to see through the blinding light, we see a silhouette of a big, bulky man. He's standing in front of the truck, hands on his hips, just standing there. We aren't but a car length and a half away from this guy, and there's nowhere to go but left, which we know just leads us back around to the same place. We sit staring at each other for a few moments, trying to decide what to do. My friend starts pulling the car forward at a snail's pace, trying to keep as much distance between us and this truck as possible, and we make the left turn. He's just standing there, not moving, just looking in our direction. We weren't scared yet, really, but I'm a bit paranoid generally, so I was waiting for him to lunge at the car, throw something at us or something, I don't know, it just felt really off. After we turn, I check the rear view and see the guy holding something as he takes a few steps behind our car in the outline of the light. It's long, barrel-shaped, and threatening-looking. We peel out of there now, wanting to put distance between us, but forgetting we are stuck in this square of roads. When we get back to about the halfway point between the start of the straightaway and the truck, whose headlights we can still see, we pull off to the side of the road, trying to figure out how to get out of this situation. I look out the window and see that we are sitting right next to the cemetery we had been looking for, but we are both too freaked to get out now, and we laugh at the irony for a second. Then we see headlights coming from behind us. Oh shit, it's the guy, we think. As it gets closer, we see it's a white SUV, and it slows down next to our car. The windows roll down, and it's a car full of guys our age. What are you guys up to out here, the driver says. We say, just out for a drive, and they say some things we can't hear to each other. My friend and I don't have a strong menacing aura, so we hoped we could just send some chill vibes and have them leave us off the hook for whatever was going on. Were they in with the truck guy? Because this wasn't truck guy, but this was all just too weird. We asked if they'd seen a truck up ahead where they had to have driven in, but they said that they hadn't. When we looked back, we noticed the lights from the oncoming direction were gone. They laugh and pull away slowly, telling us to have a good night, and we pull back onto the road and take off for the exit, only looking out the windows for long enough to notice that only the sedan was still there. Sorry, buddy. Hope your car is all right. We made it back to his parents' place without further incident and told them about the encounter, but we couldn't explain what had happened, really. It still sounds kind of stupid when I write it out, but something was going on. Sure, it still could have just been a guy out fixing a car late at night, but why the aggressive behavior? And who were the people in the SUV, and why did they suddenly appear? Just glad nothing worse happened. I avoid state parks at night, but my friend, he's still a maniac camping in the woods alone, and he's seen some stuff. What a guy, crazy bastard. Near where I live, but far out in the sticks, there's a glorified gravel path in the woods called Rube Hill. It runs maybe three miles long, and only a half mile of it is paved. 
On the south end is the pavement, with a few old but otherwise normal houses dotting it, deceptively average at that point. Then the houses end, the pavement ends, and the gravel road shoots up a steep hill. It's not taken care of at all. The gravel is piled up in potholes and berms, so unless you're driving a nice off-road vehicle, you'd want to take it easy. So since you'd need to drive slowly, you'd get a nice clear view of the handmade signs nailed to the trees with messages like, no trespassing, and we are watching you, scrawled in Sharpie on them. At the top of the hill, the road winds lazily for a little under a mile, before diving back down the other side of the hill. The gravel is in equally crappy condition on this side. After you reach the bottom of the hill, the road cuts straightish for about a mile through cornfields before intersecting with another road. The reason I'm so familiar with the layout is that I have often taken friends on late night drives to this road to scare the crap out of them. Never an elaborate prank, I just drive slowly and play creepy music and get them amped up and paranoid. I always made sure to talk about the meth heads and their labs out there too, and how the sheriffs try to avoid going there because it's dangerous. I figured it was bullshit, just stories, but I think now there's an element of truth to some of the rumors. I was with my friend Aaron one night, and we decided to go on a late night drive to Rube Hill to freak ourselves out. So we took off, drove down the various country highways and back roads and turned onto it. I made sure to play extra creepy music since me and Aaron had made the trip before. It honestly lost its creepy luster on me by then, but I still enjoyed the long drives and scaring my friends. Of course it mostly went by uneventful, and we were almost across the hill about to descend the other side when Aaron freaked out. I checked my mirrors to see what he was shitting a fist over and saw truck headlights down the road. They seemed to be back where the road first topped the hill. The truck made it under the only street light on top of the hill, a really dim orange light, and I could see it was kicking up a ton of dirt. It was speeding towards us. I paused the music and sure enough, with the windows down, I could hear the gravel crunching and flying like a vehicle was speeding. Keep in mind that I've driven this road dozens of times, both during the day and at night and had never encountered another vehicle. So having a truck speeding to seemingly catch up to us at midnight, on a road lousy with rumored meth heads, was pretty jarring. Usually I didn't relinquish my brakes driving down that hill, but this time I didn't even touch them. So the next day I'm hanging out with another friend, Chris. Chris and I are just lounging around playing video games, talking about quantum physics, Chris's favorite thing, and Chipotle, my favorite thing. I, of course, told him all about Aaron and I getting chased the previous night, and I kinda hammed it up, made it come across as a little more harrowing than it really was. But now Chris wanted to go to the road, so we waited until late that night, about two in the morning probably, and went to Rube Hill. This time I wasn't playing any music, I wanted to be alert. It was all going quite normally, just like usual, when I slammed on my brakes. I threw the car in park and just said, Uh, you see that too, right? I looked at Chris. He was just as confused as me and he just nodded. My headlights were clearly illuminating a thick metal cable stretched across the road. On the right, it was wrapped around a tree at what I'd guess was roughly head height for a standing adult, and it was pulled taut across the road and anchored to a fence post at roughly chest height. I had no idea what to make of it or how to react when I heard gravel being thrown by tires. I checked my mirrors and sure enough truck headlights were tearing ass down the road from behind us. I started freaking out. My breathing and heart rate were out of control, and I began sweating. Chris just swore under his breath quietly. I threw it into drive, pulled as far to the right as I could, and my low-sitting car slid under the cable with a loud metal-on-metal -metal scraping noise. I cringed as I heard the scrape, but I wasn't about to sit there and get deliveranced. So again I flew down the hill, and this is the creepy cherry on the Sunday for me personally because Chris didn't see it. As we left the tree line and entered the cornfields, I glanced to my right past Chris, and briefly caught a glimpse of somebody standing about three or four feet back in the corn. I just felt my stomach scrunch up, and I floored the accelerator. I glanced in my rearview mirror and could see a man standing in the road behind us, illuminated by the moon and my taillights. He had a long object slung over his shoulder. I couldn't tell if it was a cane or maybe a rifle, but I didn't stay to find out. Before I could even tell Chris about it, we were around a bend and out of sight. I haven't been back to that road since then. I live in a very rural, mountainous area of California, and at this time was working as a cook in a restaurant. I was 24 and not in the best place financially at the time, so I had been borrowing my uncle's car to drive to and from work. I worked from 5pm to 11pm, 
I know everyone in this area well and I don't have a single enemy. I get along with everyone. One night I had gotten done closing up the kitchen and decided to have a beer before going home. The bartender was talking to a fellow community member and trying to get him to go home. He was too drunk for his own good. There were some out-of-towners that weren't too fond of the locals' demeanor and it seemed like it was getting intense between them. I had my beer and went out and got in the car. I could see inside the bar and spotted the drunk local, completely smashed. I felt bad for not offering a ride home, but was tired from work and told myself he'll be okay. I drive away. Mind you, there's no street lamps, no buildings. It's the middle of nowhere. Pitch black. Quiet. I realize about a mile from the bar that I should turn around and offer the local a ride home. He didn't live far and it wouldn't be far out of my way to do so. I turn around at a muddy turnout and go back. I get in the bar, and I basically was short with the local and told him that I would pick him up in the morning and he could get his truck, sober, that I'll give him a ride home tonight. I was 24 at the time, and a small-built female. He was a smaller-built, 35-ish looking male. I knew this guy had hit on me in the past, but I assumed he was just a 35-year-old weirdo who was lonely. I always shrugged off his advances. Anyway, with a couple minutes of reasoning, he finally hopped in the car and I took off, driving towards his home, about five miles away on winding mountain roads. I didn't notice anything at first. He seemed drunk, quiet, mumbly. But not too long into the drive, he starts saying thank you, how nice I am to help him out. I say the usual. Of course, no problem. Couldn't let him be there knowing full well he wasn't able to drive. This is where I start getting creeped out. I make a turn on the road he lives on. It's a long road, not many houses. All of the driveways are long, about a mile or two, so you don't see any houses. He gets really quiet and it's dark in the car. I can't see him really well. I notice him look at me though. I could see the reflection of his eyes from the dim lights on the radio. This is something I remember very vividly. His eyes gleaming kind of green from the lights on the radio knobs. He was just looking at me. I, without returning his gaze, said, What's up? Why are you looking at me like that? He says to me, you're so pretty and I never get this chance to be alone with you. I shrugged it off, trying to play it cool, although I started regretting my decision. All of the sudden he reaches over to me while I'm driving and tries to put his hand I'm assuming on my breast, but instead his hands land on my shoulder area. I start yelling at him, telling him to stop. I slam on my brakes in the middle of the road. No one is behind me, there's no one for miles. And I scream at him to get out of this car now, and I repeat it over and over. At this point I had my hands off the wheel and I was trying to push him out of the car. I had leaned over and opened the car door. I had never in my life realized my own strength, my own weak strength. This thirty-something male was not budging against me. I notice him laughing, a really sloppy laugh. He says, you and I both know that no one is around. I said to him, we just left the bar, at least five people know where I am going, please stop. Here's a flashlight, walk on home, I'm done with you tonight. He is quiet for a minute before saying, I don't feel like walking much. The way he said it scared the living shit out of me. I start screaming, not like a hoarse scream, but like an ear-piercing scream. I knew the scream was strong and loud, and I had even hurt my own ears, just hoping someone had their windows open somewhere off in the woods. But nothing happened. We struggled for what felt like minutes as he kept trying to come at me. This entire time he was kind of laughing. He was drunk, so that was probably my only advantage. He was sloppy and trying to attack me for whatever reason. I pushed on him like I had never pushed on anything in my life. I pushed so hard that I felt my arms just burning with pain. When he finally gets out of the car, I slam on the gas, not even bothering with the door. Remember, I was headed down a long ass road in the middle of nowhere, and not on my road. It's a dead end road after about 20 miles. So I keep driving down this road I know well, knowing full well I will need to stop to turn around. When I finally do, I turn around fast and in someone's dirt driveway, afraid of the car being still for even a second. I take off driving, knowing he'll be up ahead any second. I never see him. I never see him again. He was a local I'd known for years and saw frequently. I don't know if he took off to another area from embarrassment or what, but I never saw him again. I arrived home shaking, red, scratched, out of breath. My boyfriend and our friend were at home playing Jenga, and I told them immediately, and they knew who it was too, and they went to try and find him. Never saw him again. That was last November.